That must have been such a tough decision, though, Ruth. It must have been so difficult to make that decision. Yeah, it is. I mean, I've, I've really loved the job and I've been sure. doing it for about eight years. So it's, it, you know, it's been a bit of a shift uh, <laughs> and, and politics hasn't been dull in those eight years. It's Indeed. been pretty busy, both yeah. across the UK and, and specifically in Scotland as well. So, um, you know, there was there was pretty mixed emotions there. I was I was trying really hard. I was doing the you know Theresa May sort of had the catch her voice. I was like trying not to not do that. To. Let's not let women down. Yeah. But um. But yeah. And I was you know trying to explain to people and and I think they understand that it's not just about one thing. So part of it was the family and and having my son and choosing to make different choices. And yeah. I've I've often had to. In fact, I've always put my work first and the job first and the role first. And sometimes that means that my fam my wider family has suffered um, and now I'm making a different choice. But part of it is also because I've been hopelessly conflicted over Brexit. You know, I, I campaigned for Remain, I believe in Remain, but I also believe that if you ask a question and say it's too big for politicians to make the decision and the mm. country has to, and the country makes a decision, even if it wasn't the decision I would have made, you've got to honour that. So, yeah. so I, I do support Brexit happening, even if I didn't want it to happen. And I, I, and I, and I still want to be part of a, a wider union. I, I mm. you know, I'm slightly characterised my time in politics, arguing to be parts of wider unions. Yeah. So that conflict as well made it harder to be as good a leader and as clear-sighted a leader as I had previously been. Mm. And, I'm professionally proud of, you know, I, I want to do a good job and I, I wasn't performing at the level that I had done before either. So it was it was all about, it wasn't all about one thing, it was about yeah. the combination and, <laughs> and people's lives are complicated and the personal and the political kind of and, and the job side get intermingled all the time. I mean, today is a big day, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, huge, huge day. Huge day. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on. The court decision is going to be made today mm. and who knows what's going to happen. That's the thing we, we do not know. Do you think he was right? Do you think he was right to do this, to, to, to suspend Parliament for well, so long? Well, I think, it was, I think it was done in a bad way, but right. the idea that a Prime Minister doesn't suspend Parliament in order to bring forward a Queen's speech and a legislative agenda, mm -hmm. that happened, in fact, up until recently, that happened almost every year. Right. It happened, so prorogation, we never called it that, but Parliament would stop, you'd then have a wee break, you'd then have the Queen's mm -hmm. speech, and the government would say, here's all the stuff we're going to do in the next year, and they'd start introducing, in, introducing bills. And, and because there wasn't a majority in Parliament since the snap election in 2017, it's been almost three years since that happened. So it became a bigger thing than it needed to be because they pushed it together with other gaps. So, so the, with the summer recess when mm. Parliament doesn't sit and all these other things, and it looked as if it was political. Now, I was quite close to David Cameron and Theresa May. I, I'm not close to Boris Johnson. I'm not going to mm. pretend that I've no. ever been part of his inner circle. I haven't. So I don't know why the government chose to do that. And that's one of the things that the, the judges are going to be deciding and what the Scottish case looked at. Mm. But in terms of the mechanism, the mechanism happens all the time. So it's, I think what's being decided on is the motive for it happening right, this sure. time. But they certainly didn't manage to take the country or the parliament along with them as they did it. And no. there's questions about that. And it's a huge mess. And, and David Cameron last night, I mean, I'm sure you watched, mm. they watched the interview. He was scathing a bit, Boris. I mean, he basically said Boris actually doesn't really believe in Brexit. It's just all a bit Boris. It's whatever's going to be good for him. Now, that is diametrically opposite to the kind of politician you are. Well, again, look, I'm, I'm not close to Boris, so I don't know what's in his heart. I don't know whether he desperately believes in Brexit or doesn't believe in Brexit, and I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I do. But I, I do think that people can tell, even if they're not political mm. uh, or watch the news every night and shout at, you know, shout at question time every Thursday or whatever, I think people can tell if politicians are basically telling the truth or not, and they mm. can tell if they mean what they say. Um, just because we're all human and we can read people pretty well. So I've always, I've always tried to be... Um, up front with folk and yeah. I've always thought that if even if folk don't agree with you um, they'll respect that you mean it and they'll respect your arguments and that's the trouble I don't think people do I, I think we've I think we've come a long way even in the time I've been in politics which mm. is only just under 10 years we've moved a long way from giving people the benefit of the doubt yeah. to not even listening to their arguments however good they are mm. because of which side they come from and I think that's really dangerous the idea that you discount a good idea just because it comes from someone that wears the wrong colour of rosette is a bad way to do politics and you always said that you because know, a lot of people and um, particularly when all the debates were going on about mm. Brexit before before the referendum and they, a lot of people both sides you know in Scotland and in England said you would be a brilliant prime minister and you've <laughs> always said I'm not you, you've always said you're not interested genuinely not interested yeah I mean I think 
I mean, it's lovely to hear that. Yeah, it you know, it's, be, it's lovely. Of and, and, you know, I've got enough self-knowledge to know that one of the reasons that people say that is because they knew that I was never going to put myself forward for it. <laughs> Do you think? So it's, it's the David Miliband <laughs> thing. Like, a king across the water is only attractive if they stay across the water. You know, <laughs> as soon as they actually get in the mix, they become much right. less attractive an option. You know, I'm, I'm not kidding myself here. I really am not But... Um, you know, there are people that I still ad admire in politics and, and having worked in politics for a long time, um, there are people that are in it for the right reasons. Most people are in it for the right mm. reasons. And I think it's sometimes hard to remind yourself of that in the last few years when we've had this sort of breakdown because there's not a, 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 there's not a majority in Parliament for anything, it seems, mm. because even the people that are on the same side uh, don't agree with each other of, of what mm. Brexit should look like or shouldn't look like. Um, it looks like politics has been a mess. Mm. Uh, and, That's and what I, it feels like. And I fully understand why people are really frustrated and, mm. and just want to say a plague on all your houses. The thing is, you're only 40. <laughs> and you know, you, you are. You're that, only 40. that feels quite old, I have to say. <laughs> no, no, I, I haven't no. slept in a really long time. No, you with are. A young baby, and I know that, so. I know that you've, you've, you know, you're going to spend a lot more time with your son. Your life hmm. must be very different now. Yeah, it is. It's really different, but good different. Yeah, you can take him for a walk. You can do all of these things that you probably didn't have time to do before. Yeah, I mean, I, I, this weekend, I think, is the first weekend in the best part of a decade where I didn't work any part of Saturday and Sunday together. And some days I would work both, some days Did I would work... Did that feel odd? Or was it, that it, felt, quite it, it felt liberating. naughty. Like, I, I, felt, <laughs> I felt bad, you know, right. but, but um, in, in a kind of, yeah, in a naughty way. And, and it was the simplest thing. So myself and my partner... Uh, you know, loaded up the baby and the dog, and we went for a walk along the Edinburgh Canal, so the Fourth Clyde mm -hmm. Canal, um, and stopped off at a park on the way and played in the swings and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I, I've lived on and off in Edinburgh for about 12 years, and I've never walked along the canal. You know, it's it amazing. The, the yeah, first time I'd done that, yeah. and, and it was just the loveliest, loveliest thing. And I guess your relationship with Jane will change, because she's known you as the leader of the Conservative Party in Scotland. She's not... Yeah, she doesn't call me that in the house. No, she doesn't. <laughs> That would be weird. That would be quite weird. <laughs> would be very strange. But it does the dynamics will change, and that's not just it's a good thing or a bad thing. They'll just change. Yeah, I mean, I think we've had a bit of a test run. Yeah. Because I was off on maternity leave for, for six months, and then she did eight nine weeks after that. So we've we've done the bit where I'm in the house all the time. We've done the bit where she's in the house in the time. We've not spent much time in the house together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and we, I was already doing the the leadership when we got together as a couple. Mm. So, so yeah, I mean. This might end us. You know, she might say that I'm, I'm a horror to live with. We don't know. So we'll, it. we'll see. We'll see no, how it goes. It's great. It really, it, it, I just think for someone like you, it doesn't matter what your politics are. Uh, we need more politicians who are human beings. And you're a human being. Well, I'm certainly aren't. flawed. <laughs> no, but that's fine. That's OK. That's OK. But you communicate so well with people. It's that sort of thing that you've got that touch that you can actually... And I wish we had more of that. Well, I just don't think people are that different. And the job I did before I did politics, um, I worked uh, for the BBC. I worked yeah. mostly as a radio presenter. And I worked on a programme where you would do, like, 20 different stories a day, every mm. day. And you would find yourself on some days talking to criminals in the morning and cabinet ministers at night and you sometimes couldn't tell a difference, do you know? <laughs> uh, and, and it really does teach you that there's, there's not that much between us. And I think that I despair so much of, of some of the, the bile and the venom, I particularly agree. on social media, where people are shouting at folk they've never met and they don't understand... Um, some of the context of the decisions that they're making or, or what they're saying because they've never walked a mile in their shoes. And I'm just thinking, look, lads, do you know, we're yeah. pretty much all the same underneath. Let's just dial it back a little bit. And I, because of the David Cameron book that was uh, released and there was a, a chapter in, that was in the Sunday papers about his disabled son Ivan and losing mm. him at the age of six. And, and I can't imagine what it's like to lose a child. And I'd looked back at, the, at Gordon Brown, a sworn political enemy, you know, yeah. um, who'd also lost a child, and I, I covered this when I was a reporter, when his daughter Jennifer Jane died at just a few days know. old. I was yeah. at the funeral uh, to cover it as a, as a reporter. It was, it was horrendous. And I, I posted on my social media um, Gordon Brown's speech to Parliament ab about David Cameron losing mm. his child. And, and it was just the decency of it. We've and it, lost that. And it, I feel, think it feels like we've lost that yeah. decency in politics. I, I hear exactly and, what you're saying. And I miss it. Mm. I really miss it. Mm. Well, bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back. Don't be, don't be away forever. Don't be away forever. But I'm still an MSP. It's well, not exactly. like I'm, I'm it's still not like working. I've exactly. still got full-time yeah, There's, there's a small matter of that you're so, an MSP. Uh, so I'm still working hard for the people of Edinburgh Central, but um, we'll see what the future holds.